And I'm going to talk about uh, artificial intelligence and, uh, and machine learning in health applications and uh, the application of regulation and standards. Um, so uh, the, the company name is Oovo, um, and we are a uh, product development technology consultancy. Uh, we're based in Darsbury in Cheshire in the UK, and we also have uh, an office at the uh, high tech campus in Eindhoven in the Netherlands. And I, I set the company up with, with a group of other uh, technical specialists with complementary skills to help get new uh, innovative digital health technologies to market. And so uh, to do that, we, we offer services in technology development, in strategy and innovation and in regulatory support. So I think as we've heard in the, the other presentations, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning offers some uh, uh, real promise uh, to improve, improve healthcare, both in terms of better outcomes for patients and more efficient delivery of, of healthcare. And uh, I think has been, as has been said, it's going to complement humans rather than replace them. Um, it will re result in better data driven decisions, improved efficiencies and integration of information. And one of the, 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 the case studies I saw that, that particularly uh, impressed me is not related to healthcare, but, but chess. And uh, I think it's, it's well publicized that an AI uh, machine beat uh, a chess grandmaster. What's probably less well known is that when a simple AI program running on a laptop um, was used by that chess grandmaster, he was able to beat the supercomputer. And I think more, more importantly, an amateur chess player with a simple laptop based chess program uh, was able to consistently beat a chess grandmaster. And I think if we translate that to healthcare and we say, what will that do for doctors um, that are working on the front line if they are complemented with AI technology that has the benefit of access to huge amounts of data, um, then I think we, we're in for vastly improved healthcare. And, and that's the promise of AI, and I think it's why I see it as one of the, the key technologies in the digital transformation of, of healthcare. However, uh, uh, there's always a however, uh, AI is built on software and software contains bugs. and uh, Software can be dangerous, particularly in healthcare applications. So Thomas and Thimbleby in 2018 published a paper that showed a, a conservative estimate is that software faults could contribute to a thousand deaths per year in England alone. And I think if we look at worldwide figures, then those those numbers are uh, you know make for sobering reading. Um, and an interesting thing is that manufacturers appear to be unaware of it. And I think this is one of the things that, that, that I see is that there is a complacency um, uh, and uh, around uh, software quality and a tendency to believe that uh, our software doesn't have any bugs in it. And, um, and, and I think people that are experienced in developing safety critical systems know that all software has bugs. Um, so, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning can be a regulated medical device. And uh, as, as Lauren was saying, there's the different regulation applies in different parts of the world. The European Union has uh, a new regulation which is uh, coming into effect, uh, uh, MDR and IVDR. Uh, and in the US, it's the codes of federal regulation. And compliance with regulation is a legal requirement. It's, it, it is mandatory and it is something that is required before you can legally place a product on the market. And what is regulation for? It, it, it's there to protect the public. It's there to ensure that a, a device, whatever the nature of that device, whether it's a, a sticking plaster or a proton therapy machine is safe and that means that it doesn't introduce any unnecessary risks, that it is effective, and that means it fulfills its intended purpose and delivers the, the clinical benefit that is claimed by the manufacturer, and that it is secure. And this is a, a relatively new uh, requirement that 
uh, technology should be secure. And healthcare is one of the most uh, attacked industries because uh, electronic medical records uh, have value on the black market, largely through insurance fraud. Um, and so hospitals face a daily barrage of uh, cyber attacks. And, and so technology that is connected to healthcare information systems needs to be secure. So uh, compliance is, is demonstrated through adopting documented processes for development um, and producing records relating to each device or each technology that is developed. So it's an important, an important consideration that the regulation covers the way a product is developed. So that means it, it starts at the beginning. It's not something that you can bolt on at the end. And I think this is one of the pieces of advice advice that I, I would give to startups is make sure that you have sufficient funding for regulatory compliance because as a rule of thumb developing a regulated medical device probably costs three times as much as a commercial piece of technology um, and, and, and that can be frightening but it, it is what is required and uh, how do we achieve compliance with regulation? Well, it's best done through the adoption of harmonized standards. Uh, the standards themselves are not mandatory. Compliance with the regulation is mandatory. And the standards are uh, industry industry's consensus on the best way of uh, complying with the regulation. So for AI and uh, ML applications, the standards that are uh, most applicable are ISO 13485, which, which governs quality management systems for medical device development. IEC 82304, which covers health software applications. So this is a high level standard for, um, for software only and software as a medical device applications that would cover AI and ML. And they, it, what it defines are some of the uh, requirements such as labeling for for software specific devices that don't actually have any packaging so how do you how do you display the label and the meet the labeling requirements that's in the regulation it's one example of what is covered in IEC 82304 along with validation um, of software a key one is IEC 62304 for software development uh, of medical device software this is a standard that uh, defines a whole series of activities and tasks from software development planning, software requirements analysis, software architectural design, right through to software testing and software release. It, it appears to be very linear in its uh, definition of the requirements, um, but it is possible and something that we, we, we certainly help a lot of clients with is mapping the requirements of IEC 62304 and 82304 on an agile development methodology. IEC 62366 um, uh, applies to usability engineering and particularly use errors and, and uh, involves developing an understanding of, of the, the types of errors that, that users can make and how that can result in hazards and how those hazards are best managed through, through better user interface design. ISO 14971 is, is another key standard for risk management. Risk management is the process of understanding what hazards can be introduced by a technology and uh, an evaluation of those hazards on the basis of the severity of harm that can result and the likelihood that that harm can happen and best practice risk control measures. How do you mitigate those risks either through developing new technologies or adapting the design in some way. And then uh, the, the last standard that I've picked out is ISO 14155 uh, for clinical investigations. So when I talked uh, about effectiveness of a medical device, clinical investigations are used to support claims of, of efficacy of a medical device. So all of these standards are applicable to AI and ML. However, uh, AI has some problematic features um, when it comes to compliance with standards. So 
first, it, it is software that may have the capability to modify itself. And, and anyone that's worked in safety critical software development uh, for many years, uh, as I have, would know that that is an anathema to safety critical systems development, that software modifying itself is, um, is really a bad idea. Um, principally because you've been through a whole rigorous process of, um, of, of design scrutiny and then the software has just deviated from that. And so you don't know what it's doing. Um, the output from AI and ML can be non-deterministic. And that means that you might get a different result each time you're on a test. It is opaque to design scrutiny. And, and uh, this is one of the, the, the key principles of safety critical software development and safety critical systems development is that you really have a good understanding of the design and the way it works. And I talked about risk management. So how do you how do you apply risk management by understanding the way in which software can fail? But if you have a technology that is no one really understands how it works or why it works, then that's really difficult to apply that design scrutiny to it. And also it has a training based approach. Um, and that is uh, that it, again is something that is not covered by any of the standards that exist for development of medical device software. So existing standards do not have the coverage required to demonstrate safety and effectiveness. So there is, there is a gap. And so our, our suggestion is that a, a new approach is required. I, I mentioned earlier on that it's regulation that's mandatory. The standards are, uh, the standards are voluntary, but they do, uh, they do suggest best practice. So those standards I think should be applied, but they need to be uh, they need to be augmented with some new approaches. Uh, and that is, what are the best practice design life cycles for, for safety critical AI and ML? So the learning process of how do we do that? A toolkit for veri verification and validation. So again, this is, this is looking at an AI application from two perspectives. Uh, and, and I think Lauren talked about this a bit. One of the problems is bias. So validation would be, is the technology learning the right things in the right way? And verification is, did it learn those things correctly? So is it delivering results that are based on that learning? Um, and then risk management approaches. And I saw an interesting paper uh, recently that was talking about a, a, a machine vision application that was looking at an image of a room and it was being asked the question, what's covering the windows? And it said curtains are covering the windows and it was correct. But what the what this team had done is they developed a technology that was was essentially doing that like eye tracking, looking where was the AI looking, and it started looking at the floor and then worked its way up. And once it recognised there was a bed, it concluded that it was looking at a bedroom. Therefore, the windows must be covered by curtains. So it never actually looked at the window. So risk management in AI is going to be built on uh, some of some tools like that that can tell us, give us some insights, and look through that 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 opacity of how the technology is working. Because that, in in that instance, if it was looking for cancer in a medical image, and it was inferring that something was cancerous or not, without actually looking at the area of interest, then that's potentially very dangerous. So I think that there are some new approaches um, that need to be developed to fill the the gap that exists between. AI technology and the standards that, that exist for engineered systems, and that's what they were written for. So uh, that concludes my presentation. You can find out more about us at uh, aovotechnologies.com, and uh, there is my email address, and um, I'll, I will hand control back now. Thank you.